Unity is a cross-platform game engine developed by Unity Technologies. The engine is used for both 2D and 3D games. Like its main competitor, the Unreal Engine, it uses its own specialized format to store game assets. These asset bundles cannot be simply extracted using a zip program. It needs a specialized tool to read and export assets like models, textures and sound. To do this, the format must be reverse engineered by talented programmers. Once they understand how the file format works, they can write software to extract the files. Over the years, many tools were released for this purpose. The drawbacks, however, are that these tools often only support a small subset of Unity versions. This is because, as the Unity engine gets updated, the file format changes, and these tools no longer work on new games. This video will focus on extracting files using a tool with broad Unity version support. Note that I will demonstrate how this works for Windows games only. The process will be slightly different if you intend to extract files from iOS, Android or console versions of games. These platforms package their games in a slightly different manner, meaning that you must extract the platform specific format first, before you can access the asset bundles within. From there, the process is the same as for Windows games. This is the tool we'll need, the Unity Asset Bundle Extractor. The link is in the description. At this time, it supports versions starting from Unity 3.4 up to version 5, and all versions from 2017 until 2021. But by the time you are watching this video, that may have changed, so be sure to check the README for more information. We'll be using it to export the raw data to common formats using the included plugins. It can support text files, texture images, 3D models, and audio files. You can find the latest version under the releases tab on the GitHub page. Make sure to always grab the 64-bit version. Unless your computer is from the Stone Age, you won't need the 32-bit version. There is currently an issue that causes some malware scanner software to falsely detect the program as a virus. This is due to the software marking some really generic program routines as potentially suspicious. Rest assured, the program is harmless, and the author is working on a solution. I've linked a ticket where you can read more in the description. If your virus scanner forcefully deletes the program zip, you may need to restore the zip file and add an exception in your virus scanner. Now, since you're watching this video, I assume you have a game in mind that you want to rip from. To demonstrate the most simple example, we're going to extract audio and 2D sprites from Among Us. With the game installed through Steam, you can click the gear icon, manage, and then browse local files. This will open the game folder. If you have bought the game elsewhere, as long as you can find where the game is installed, that's all that matters. Let's see what's in this folder. We see a folder called Among Us underscore data, two exes, and a few DLL files. A quick way to check what version of Unity is being used is to right click unityplayer.dll and select properties. Under the details tab, we can see the file version. In this case, it starts with version 2020.3, which tells us that this is a version that is supported by the extractor. We close this window and turn our attention to the data directory. This is where most of the game content is located. The most notable files here are the assets and assets.res files. The .assets files contain an index of metadata and the .assets.res files hold the actual asset data. If you're looking for a specific sprite or model, it may be difficult to know which asset bundle holds the files you want. This is just a matter of using intelligent reasoning and guessing to understand how the developers organize the game files. For example, level-specific assets may be in a level-specific file, while assets used across multiple levels will be in shared asset bundles. Regardless of which asset bundle they're in, these files are organized in pairs, meaning that each bundle is made up of a .assets file and a .assets.res file. If a .assets file lacks an accompanying assets.res file, it basically holds no useful file data for us to extract, meaning it's probably safe to ignore them. With the tool zip extracted, 
you can now run assetbundleextractor.exe. We'll hit file open, and in my case, I'll open the .assets file with the largest .assets.res file. Bigger file usually means more data, so I'm assuming this particular bundle holds the most useful information. Note that you need to select both the .assets, .assets.res, and if available, the .resource file at the same time. These files are connected. If you only load one of them, you won't be able to extract the data. You can also choose to select all of the available files and just make your way through them. The bundles should now show up in the list on the left of the program. To navigate the bundle, hit the plus icon and select Assets below the file you want to inspect. That's a lot of files. There's a few things you want to keep an eye on. The name column and the type column. We can use these to narrow down the specific files we're looking for. It's easy to get overwhelmed by the types of files. After all, the engine stores more than just files in there, but also object entities that influence game logic or provide metadata about how to use and transform certain files, like animation and collision data that are only useful to the game engine itself. We're going to sort alphabetically by the type column and scroll until we see the audio clip type. There it is, the Among Us theme. To export this file, select it, go to plugins on the right and hit export audio. Save it somewhere. And there's a WAV file. If extracting fails, you may not have loaded all the necessary resource files. Make sure to load them and try again. Now let's start looking for those sprites. You may be tempted to look for a file type with sprite in the name. And this does exist. But that's actually an engine type that simply holds information of which part of a texture to show. Instead, we want to look for the texture 2D type. If we scroll further, there it is. Let's extract the player animations. Select the name, go to plugin, and export as .png or .tga. Opening the file in an image editor may reveal that the colors look a bit off. The character looks red, green, and blue. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you may already know or guess that there's a reason for this. These colors correspond to the RGB channels of the file and are used to isolate parts of the character that may be colored dynamically by the shading engine. To use these sprites in other programs, you will need to recreate this mechanism on your own or you can just edit the file in Photoshop to get what you want. Now let's find some 3D models. This time I'm looking to extract a model from the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. This is a remake of the original source game done entirely in Unity. I'm gonna load the asset bundles in a new window and start looking for a model, in this case a kettle. The file type we're looking for is the mesh type. Let's scroll through the list until we find the mesh we want. Having found the model I'm looking for, I can click plugins and either export as OBJ or DAE. Which option you need depends on the type of mesh. For static objects, OBJ is fine. But for animated meshes, you will want to select DAE. Otherwise, the armature won't be exported. When we import the mesh into Blender, one thing is immediately obvious. There is no texture or shader set up. This is because, unfortunately, the exporter doesn't know where to find the textures. We need to export these separately. So we go back to the bundle extractor and look for the textures. In some cases, the texture name may be completely unrelated to the mesh itself. And since bundles aren't organized in folders, it may be difficult to find a texture that matches your model. As mentioned before, naming and organization depends on the game. And if you have trouble finding what you need based on names alone, you may need to extract all the textures at once in order to get a visual preview in your file explorer. In my case, the texture has a similar name to the match, so I can just browse the list for a texture named Kettle. Selecting it and exporting it allows me to then add it to the shader inside Blender. And there you have it. 
we've just successfully extract assets from two different Unity games using the Unity Asset Bundle Extractor. Make sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this one.